Okay, Eric, you drew with Olga Giria today. Tell us something about the game. Yeah, um, it was a, a pretty clean game. I played an opening I've never played before, prepared it last night and this morning. And then once the game began, I forgot most of my preparation and had to figure it out on the board. So I took uh, like 10 minutes in the early kind of opening theory to recall what I was studying. And thankfully I didn't mess anything up. And we, we got kind of a, a interesting playable position, some imbalances. And uh, yeah, I, I checked afterwards with the engine, just a brief Lee Chess engine analysis. And it was a perfect game. There were no mistakes, blunders, or inaccuracies for either of us. So can't complain with that. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Let's look at it. Okay. Okay, Eric, we're looking at the position after you've just played Queen C2 in a Jaco piano. Tell us something about it. Right. Um, this is a kind of trendy opening these days. Um, there's a, a chessball course by Wesley So, and this is one of the main positions that's I believe featured in that course. Okay. And here Black has a few different options. Um, Olga played knight takes c3, mm -hmm. which was a secondary move in my preparation. Okay. I was, uh, I was a bit more ready for bishop g6, which is a more natural move aligning with the queen. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main line here is queen to b3, uh, hitting the pawn, knight to e7, and castling c6, bishop d3. And there's been a lot of top level games that have okay. reached this position. Um, so this was an alternative, but mm -hmm. we went for a slightly different route. Yes, you did. Okay, so knight takes c3. Yeah, and if we go forward a few moves, I think okay. the, the play was pretty natural. It takes f6, takes one thing here, if we just go back. Uh, mm -hmm. After I took on f6, mm -hmm. black has the option of taking on f3. And I had this position on my computer screen this morning. And the only thing I remembered is black can't take on f3 because I have the inter intermediate move, pawn takes g7. Okay. And white's doing quite well here. So yeah. uh, we followed kind of a main line. If we just hop okay, on the main line, yeah. queen f6, bishop to e2. e2 yeah. Knight a5, and knight then knight e5. e5. Natural move. We should take, takes, takes. And, takes, and c5 gets played. Right, and when I first saw c5, it looks like an elementary blunder because it allows a very simple fork yep. on d7. And it took me a few minutes to realize that it's not good for me to deliver the fork because if I go for knight d7, Black has some interesting counterplay with queen c6, six. knight f8, and pawn takes d4. Yes. And uh, it's weird because I'm temporarily up a full rook, but I think white is just much worse here because I'm losing back yes. a lot of material. Queen c3 is in the position, yeah. and I just didn't want to have any of this. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so... Um, so I castled instead. Castled, and we and, carry on. Yep. Takes, takes. And you played queen to e6. Queen e6, and this is a very natural move. It uh, avoids the fork now, which I was threatening. It also supported knight to c4, which uh, we're gonna see very soon. Yeah. After f4. Four, knight c4. And then knight c4. And yeah, so it's an interesting kind of imbalance because I have this very strong knight on e5, but now black is challenging it. Mm -hmm. And the problem with my position is my bishop on yeah. e3. It's just a really sad piece. Yeah. Um, so my dream was to get in g4 and f5 and eventually bishop f4 bishop comes to and try and attack on the king side. Um, I really wanted to play g4 right away, but I don't think this quite works for me because after knight takes e5, I would really like to take back with the pawn, but then d4, d4. and I'm getting hurt here because bishop f2 hangs f4 pawn. Aye. Yes. And bishop d2 is even worse because yep. d3 check. I can see that one. <laughs> so yeah. instead of going into this, instead of that, I played rook ad1, rook AD1. which is yeah. just improving the worst place piece, yeah. uh, more of a prophylactic move. Mm -hmm. And so if we keep we going. we move on to that one. Yep. Uh, keep going. Yeah, we can now keep going. G4, so g4. Takes, d takes. And this is where things begin to simplify. Yes. Um, we trade on, or rook c4 is a good move, and we trade on b6. Trade on b6. 
check, so you move the king. And then takes, very quickly, a lot of things came off the board because I, I lose yeah. f4. It's a major hoovering off of me. And then I win d5. And, and at first, it looks scary for me because yes. my king is a bit naked, my rook is pinned. Yeah. But uh, it turns out everything is under control Everything, after queen yes. to d3. It does look scary, as you say. And then rook f8. And I still have to be careful because black is threatening rook to d8. Sure. Sure, yeah. And my rook is still pinned, so, so I you break move the pin. And then queen, queen c1. c1. And it still looks scary because all these <laughs> check possibilities. Yes. And, yeah, king's um, a bit exposed. Right. Very exposed, actually. And I realized here that I can just drop back to d2. And I'm allowing queen g1, but mm -hmm. if she plays queen g1, I just tuck my king away on h4. Yeah. And surprisingly, my king is quite safe here because I'm mm -hmm. controlling the two checking squares. Mm -hmm. g5 doesn't quite work for black. And I'm ready to play rook d8 and just force some trades. Yeah. Yeah. So she didn't so go for was, this. That was okay. Queen a3 check got played. Queen a3. And this is where we just repeated moves. Yeah. I don't think she saw anything better than to... Just uh, go for this after queen c5, mm -hmm. I move back. I still was allowing queen g1, but if she didn't play it the first time, I didn't think she would play it <laughs> this position. So okay. the game ended very peacefully. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much, Harry. Thank you.